I'm Rick Bayless, and I've been exploring, cooking, and eating in Mexico for over 40 years. Now I'm taking you to Mexico City for a deep dive into the classic dishes you've asked to learn. It's time to share my best recipes ever. Tacos al Pastor have a cult following. No, you can't even say a cult following anymore because it seems like just everybody is wild about them. And they're everywhere, all over Mexico City. So I've brought you to this place called Tizoncito. And before you start throwing things at your screen and saying I know nothing about Tacos al Pastor because your favorites are this one or that one, let me explain why I brought you here. So Tizoncito, number one, has a huge, long history of making tacos al pastor here in Mexico City. Second thing is, they cook with charcoal, not with gas. And I love the flavor of tacos al pastor that are made with charcoal. Third thing is that they make that trompo fresh every day with this marinade that I think is really delicious. It's a combination of achiote, the Yucatan spice, and red chili that is typical here in the central part of Mexico. They put just enough on there to start to change the texture of the meat just a little bit, but not too much. Señor, voy a querer dos tacos, por favor. Sí, con todo. So you've got the really thin slices of meat that are charred on one side, and then, of course, the roasted pineapple that goes over the spit that's ubiquitous with Tacos al Pastor in Mexico City. Uh, the onions and cilantro, but it's the salsas that are really the icing on the cake when you're making a great Taco al Pastor. Of course, the one that is the, the most common here is Chile Morita. It's a small, smoky, dried chili, and I love the combination myself. It wouldn't be a taco unless we squeeze some fresh lime over the top of it. And now has come the moment that I get to enjoy this taco al pastor. A good taco filling can be ruined by a bad tortilla. And let me tell you that in Mexico, not all tortillas are good tortillas. In fact, since GMO corn has come into Mexico, a lot of young chefs and entrepreneurs have dedicated themselves to promoting the rich variety of heirloom corns you find here in Mexico, the birthplace of corn. And many of them have opened little tortillerias that make some of the most delicious tortillas you could imagine. Yeah, they're a little more expensive than the run-of-the-mill ones, but they're worth it for every bite. At Sintli in Mexico City, they make their fresh masa with organic heirloom corn that is briefly boiled and soaked in a solution of calcium hydroxide, what's called cal in Mexico. Now once that cal solution is drained and rinsed off, the nixtamalized corn is then put through a grinder that is fitted with volcanic millstones. The masa is then put through a machine that rolls, cuts, and bakes it into beautiful fresh tortillas. Just what you need for a perfect taco. Al Pastor are just plain fun. Now I told you that they're available everywhere in Mexico City. 
And this is the last place you would really expect to find it because this is an auto parts store by day. Well, sort of. I mean, the, the auto parts store is all around it. And when that place closes up at 8 o'clock, this little place with some of the best tacos al pastor in all of Mexico City opens up. It's called El Bilcito. And it is so incredibly popular that in spite of pouring rain all around us, people are just packed in here. Because, it, well, the flavors are just completely traditional. It's really classic food. It's got those huge trompos, I mean, bigger than life trompos of the sliced pork that's been beautifully marinated and then seared and sliced and the pineapple and the salsa and the fresh garnishes and on and on. People love it too because you have to stand up to eat them. You're outside, you're right on the street and you probably know this from having had picnics. Food just tastes better when you eat it outside. Pineapples in a Mexican market look really different than the pineapples that you find in an American grocery store. First of all, they're not green. These are golden pineapples because these are field ripened pineapples. Now, when you're in a Mexican market, you never touch the produce unless you ask the vendor. So I asked this guy if I could pick up the pineapple because I really want to show it to you. So you can see right away that it looks very ripe. It's deep golden color, but it almost looks like the juice is just going to pour right out of it, which of course is going to translate into the absolute best tacos al pastor that you could ever imagine. Now, when you're making tacos al pastor in Mexico City, everyone will tell you to season it with achiote. Why achiote? I mean, that is the classic seasoning of the Yucatan Peninsula of Cochinita Pibil. It's because it gives it this beautiful color and this redolent flavor. So how do you buy achiote? You buy it already ground into a paste with all kinds of herbs, spices, and garlic. And you buy it in a small box like this. And I'll pull it out here and you can see that beautiful orangish paste there. And when you smell it, it just smells like the whole world of flavor. That's why it makes the tacos al pastor taste so good. Now, pork in a Mexican market can be a little bewildering to the American visitor. First of all, it's in big cuts and they're all right out in front of you. They're not cut into small portions and shrink wrapped and in a display case someplace. But you can recognize some of the cuts here, even though some may be a little bit different. Of course, there's loin and these are ribs. This is the pork hock. And then there's some pork tenderloins over here. But this is what I want to show you because this is the part that is from the shoulder. It's called espaldilla here in Mexico, and it can be absolutely perfect for making the tacos al pastor. But they will tell you also the leg meat, which is these three back here, is great for that. We just don't see leg meat in the American markets because we make all of the pork leg meat into ham. Señora, yo voy a querer esta pieza de espaldilla, por favor. Muchas gracias. I'll tell you right away that when you make tacos al pastor at home, they're going to be different than what you would buy from a place that has one of those great big vertical spits. Just think about it. The vertical spit chars them on the edge. You're going to be charring them in another way, but I'll tell you, if you follow what I'm going to show you now, you can get really close to authentic tacos al pastor. When you go to the grocery store, just look for boneless shoulder roast. And now I'm going to slice it thin. The idea is to compress the meat with your left hand and slice with the right hand, if you're right-handed like I am, pressing down firmly and cutting just below the surface. You're not pressing hard with the knife, you're just letting the sharpness of the knife glide through the meat. 
Once the pork has been sliced, it's important to tenderize this pork shoulder meat. I like to use a heavy mallet while the slices of pork are between two pieces of plastic wrap. Now I'm going to put this into the refrigerator while I make the marinade. The marinade for classic tacos al pastor here in Mexico City is adobo, red chili adobo mixed with achiote. Now here you can go to the grocery store to a market and buy that adobo, which is the combination of dried red chili with garlic spices and vinegar. But in the United States, we have to make it. So I'm going to show you my absolute fastest version of that. It's a fairly complex marinade, but I'll show you how to knock it out in no time flat. So we're going to start with garlic. And this garlic you'll notice is in water. That's because I don't like to work with raw garlic. So I blanched it for one minute in water in the microwave oven. The second ingredient that we're going to put in here is ancho chili powder that's pretty readily available all over the united states now in well-stocked grocery stores and of course in all mexican markets this is very hot water we've got our vinegar and then we've got all of the spices here so we've got the mexican cinnamon round the black pepper mexican oregano cumin and salt i'll just pick all of those guys up and put that into the blender jar and then it goes over to the blender and blend it until it's completely smooth that won't take long Now this is a marinade that you can keep in your refrigerator for a month or more and it'll be just great. Put it on some chicken or some fish before you grill it and it's absolutely delicious. I'm going to pour most of it off here to keep for something else. I only need about a third of a cup for the preparation we're making now. So I am going to add the achiote. So the achiote we talked about in the market. I need about half of this small cube of it because you can see it's quite a dense paste. I'm going to tear it up into some smaller pieces. That's going to need to be dissolved with some water so I have a little additional water here. And then because this is a marinade for the grill, I'm going to give it a good douse of oil and that will help us in the grilling part of all of this. So put that back onto the blender and blend again. The marinade will go on top of both sides of the meat, just in a nice even coating. I don't like to put too much of it because it's a pungent marinade. Now I like to refrigerate the meat for a couple of hours just for that pork to absorb all those delicious flavors. To me, the perfect salsa to go with tacos al pastor is going to be a smoky one and it's going to be made with these morita chilies. This is a type of smoke dried jalapeno. Now I've roasted some tomatillos to be the bulk of that sauce. I put them under the broiler for about five minutes and then flipped them over and roasted them for about five minutes more. And I've got some garlic that I've roasted in a pan. This is one touch that makes this salsa really, really great. I'm going to let that cool for just a minute while I take the tops off of these chilies and then I'm going to lightly toast them. You might want to have a window open when you do that because they'll also release their spiciness into the air. So now I'm going to cover them with some boiling water here and I like to weight them with a plate just to make sure that they uh, rehydrate evenly there. Those will take about 15 or 20 minutes and then we'll blend everything together and we'll have our finished salsa. To finish the salsa, peel the roasted garlic and put it in a blender jar along with the rehydrated chilies 
and the roasted tomatillos. Try to keep as much of that delicious juice as you can. Then blend it all together into the consistency of a coarse puree. Add a little bit of water to make it easily spoonable and season it with salt. Blend it a few seconds more to combine all the ingredients. This will go right into our salsa dish. It's beautiful salsa. I'm gonna put about two thirds of it in here and then I'm gonna show you this wonderful but optional little trick that I learned from one of my favorite Tacos Al Pastor vendors. You take a mixture of chicken broth and orange juice, pour the last third of our salsa in there, and then this brothy mixture full of deliciousness, full of umami, will get splashed on each taco right before we eat. For those classic tacos al pastor accompaniments, I'll prep some of that fresh pineapple and red onion for the grill. So when you're ready to serve, that's when you grill the pork. Now I've got the grill really hot and I prefer to work on cast iron grill grates because they hold so much heat and you can get a better char on them. What I'm gonna do is to lay these really thin slices of marinated pork onto the grill, but I'm only gonna char them on one side. That'll give us the traditional texture that you expect from Tacos Al Pastor. But it's only gonna take a couple of minutes to cook them through. You'll notice that when they look done, just barely done on the top, that that's when they're ready to take off. Okay, the time has arrived to make a beautiful platter of all of these beautiful ingredients. So I'm gonna cut up the pork into smallish pieces and pile it here into this warm serving dish. Pineapple, some of the onions. Chop up a little bit of cilantro. Okay, now it's the moment for me to show you my perfect homemade taco al pastor. I've got hot tortillas. I've got a splash of the broth. Just a splash is really all it needs. A spoonful of salsa. A little chopped cilantro to finish it all off. And I think you're gonna love that. So the perfect taco is gonna be made with the perfect tortilla. And the perfect tortilla is going to be made from fresh ground corn masa but you won't find that anywhere except in a tortilleria that actually boils and grinds its own corn. So for those of you that have access to that, that's what you're gonna start with. If you don't have access to it, then you're going to buy masa harina or masa flour and reconstitute that with warm water. I've got fresh ground corn masa here and I'm gonna go through the steps of making a beautiful tortilla with you. Texture is everything. You want soft masa, but not so soft it sticks to your hands. Soft masa means a tender tortilla. Stiff masa means a dry one. You cut a piece of plastic to fit the bottom of your tortilla press. Lay a walnut sized piece of the masa on there, cover it with a second piece of plastic and give it a gentle press. Usually, there is a little unevenness with the presses, so I flip it 180 degrees, pull off the top piece of plastic, and then line 
one side of the tortilla up with my fingers and gently peel off this plastic. Then I'm gonna go to a preheated griddle and lay the tortilla onto the griddle, rolling it off my hand like that. This side of the griddle is a little cooler, so that's the first side where I'm going to put it down. The other side of the griddle is hotter. After about 30 seconds, and you see a little dryness happening around the outside of the tortilla, I'm going to flip it over onto the hottest side of the griddle. After about 30 seconds more, I'm gonna flip it a second time. And that's the moment where we wanna see little ripples of bubbles happen to the tortilla. After about 30 seconds more, I'm going to put the tortilla into a cloth lined basket and there it's going to finish its cooking. That's a beautiful tortilla. When I make tacos al pastor, usually I make double the amount of marinade because I like to use it on other things, like this really wonderful fish dish that I do on the grill. The marinade just goes over the fish. My absolute favorite fish to use for this is black cod. Um, sometimes when that's not available, I'll use halibut. You could do it with snapper, but you want a pretty meaty filet. And then I've laid the filets over a piece of banana leaf and set it on a little square of aluminum foil. So I'm going to slide each one of these pieces of fish onto the grill. The foil will protect it from too much heat. And of course, that little piece of banana leaf, which is widely available for a lot of us these days in the United States, will give it a beautiful flavor. Let's go to the grill. I'm gonna close the grill up and let these sort of grill bake for around five minutes, depending on how hot your grill is. We'll go back and check them in a minute. So I've got this really wonderful accompaniment to go with it that's grilled pineapple, some grilled knob onions that I've chopped up, some cilantro leaves, and a little Napa cabbage. I'm gonna season that with lime juice and a little bit of salt, more than just a tiny bit of salt because I want this to be a really nicely flavored accompaniment to go with it. And I'm gonna just mix all of that together. Then slide one of these little beauties onto plate. And then I've got that salsa that we have for tacos al pastor. And spoon some of that on top. And then our grilled pineapple accompaniment will just go right here on the plate. Now you serve this with some steaming hot tortillas and you've got a completely new take on Tacos al Pastor. Thank you.